out there, Chicago, uh, welcome. This is Shy Cat Live. Um, I am BJ Allen, the digital arts instructor at the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. And with me is Julius Jefferson, the assistant instructor in the digital lab at Shy Cat. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit again, you know, about how what Shy Cat is, what we do, um, and then we'll go over a little bit of our spring offerings, and then um, we're going to talk a little bit about digital art and uh, what Julius and I do in there. So, I do in the digital art studio. So, Shy Cat is a nonprofit. Um, we're located actually right next to Can TV. Hi, Can TV. We love you. Um, <laughs> Uh, which is pretty near the intersection of Ashland and Roosevelt in Chicago. And we are an educational nonprofit that provides art and design classes to um, youth, which is middle school and high school. Um, we offer after school classes to, the, to these students. And we also have an adult program that offers vocational training. And all of our all of our classes are no cost, like zero cost. So if you're interested in anything that you see us talking about, um, please get in touch, and uh, we can give you more information about what we do. So first, um, we'll maybe explore Shy Cat's website a little bit. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go into our webcam. And there we go. Cool. So <laughs> this is these are the courses we have we're offering in the spring. Um, so that would be podcasting in the digital lab, uh, sixth through eighth grade. That's Monday and Wednesday from four thirty to six thirty. We also have graphic design for ninth to twelfth grade students. And then in the Design Arts Studio, which is one of our three studios you can see up here at the top, um, the Design Arts Studio is offering Beyond the Pencil for middle schoolers, which is a experimental 2D art class. So that'll be things like painting and collage and stencils and screen printing, like a whole bunch of fun stuff. And then for our High schoolers were offering advanced printmaking. So again, this is in the spring. From You can see here from February 3rd to April 30th. So if you're thinking about uh, what to do uh, next spring and you're in middle school or high school or know a, a student that is that age, look us up. We also have a maker lab, a 3D maker lab, which has um, uh, 3D printing and coding and all kinds of stuff, fun stuff in it. So there's a pixel class from 6th to 8th grade uh, for um, uh, Monday and Wednesday once again, and then a high voltage class for 9th through 12th grade. That is going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. The pixel class is, a, is going to be a coding class. They'll learn JavaScript. And the high voltage class is um, uh, an electronics class where there'll also be some coding in that. So, and you can find more out about us at shycat.org. Let me say it. Enough. So, this is our website. This is how you can get in touch with us. Um, we're also on all kinds of social media here. So, uh, you know, our phone number, address, everything is on our website, which is shycat.org. So, whoops, there we go. Come on, Shy Cat. There we go. And here's our website. And here's where you can find out about both of our adult programs, youth programs. Um, oh, yeah, and events coming up. I wonder if this is on here. We have a, oh, yeah, here we go. Our youth, our exhibition uh, for this term is coming up this week at the end of the week from 5 to 7 at Shy Cat. So, none of the website. Um, so, yes, here we are. Um, Julius and I, why don't you talk a little bit more about what goes on in the digital lab? Yeah, so um, 
The digital lab pretty much deals with everything digital, such as filmmaking, photography, graphic design, Photoshop, special effects, music composition, music production, and um, that's Gra graphic design. Doing that? Oh yeah, yeah, I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, but there's definitely a whole lot, and um, all of it is pretty much powered for like uh, Mac computers. I don't know is the exact Mac model, but. Um, yeah, and the Mac computers, they all come with Adobe Creative Suite, which all the kids are able to use. It's programs like InDesign, Premiere, Photoshop, and um, i trying to get another one today, but <laughs> you know the gist of it. Yeah, the Adobe Creative Suite, it, we have professional equipment, professional software that we teach our middle schoolers and our high schoolers. And you'd be surprised um, if you haven't watched a middle school or handle Adobe Creative Suite, Man, they can really drive that thing, you they, know? They learn very quick. That's yeah. the insane to me. Like, they, ugh, I, don't, I don't get it at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, these, um, we're really proud of our, our middle school and our high school students who are able to um, pick up whatever, whatever we throw down at them and use this wonderful equipment to really, and software to, to really express their creativity. Um, oh! And I have with us from our middle school class. So our middle school class is ending right now um, and our high school classes. So we have an exhibition coming up this Friday. And one of the things we did for the middle schoolers is that in all three of our labs, um, every lab was focused in one way or another on character design. For us, um, they created different kind of fantasy compositions. And what were, do you want to describe some of them? Oh yeah, so like uh, including the fantasy portion of the class, they uh, created comic book covers, which involved the design of their own superhero and their superpowers. They got to design their own video game, which involved like pretty much deciding if you want health, it's be based around time, how you win the game, stuff like that. And uh, but also just a fantasy portrait itself, where like you can imagine yourself in a fantasy-driven world, like either with dragons or stuff of that nature. And um, so we got a lot of really interesting creative output and really uh, a lot of really cool character design. And in the other two studios that we have, um, let's see. So the Maker Lab, which is, you know does uh, 3D modeling. 3D printing, that kind of thing, they made characters in 3D. And then in the other lab, in the design lab, that class was focused on comics completely, and so they were making uh, a variety of comic book characters. So what we all decided to do was make trading cards and do a story war game. And we just did that last Friday. Man, it was so fun, and the cars were super cool. You know, we just had a we had, totally had a blast. They're a very creative bunch. Yeah, <laughs> which really are. Um, so I, we brought some of the cards. We're going to show these out of the exhibition, but um, I just thought you would like a nice little preview. So here you go. <clears throat> here you go. And here are some of the cards that the students made. Electrolift. That's kind of one of my favorites. That came out of the digital lab. Um, and uh, as you can tell, you know, students get to create characters in their own image, use all their creativity. Um, it's, it's when you, when you let them loose, you just never know <laughs> what, what, what they're going to come out with. Uh -huh. Um, especially the middle schoolers. Oh yeah. So, their imagination is like, there's no bounce to it. Yeah. <laughs> Very much. We're very, uh, we're very appreciative <laughs> of that, <laughs> and so we have a you know a little example from from our class here. Um, we can also talk a little about how our um, music video class turned out, and that was the high school class that we had this term. So um, yeah, hey, Julius, Julius is our our resident um, expert here in that area. Why, Julius, why don't you talk, before we get into the class, Julius? <laughs> Julius is amazing, and we're so lucky to have him here. <laughs> uh, do you mind telling us a little bit about what you do and how you got there? And yeah, so um, when I'm not at Shycad assisting uh, BJ with the digital lab, I'm usually working as a um, indie filmmaker. I mostly produce uh, music videos, work on short films, and uh, I was able to start that career path by um, going over to SIU where I majored in film, and I pretty much helped boost my inspiration, the aspirations to really get into the film industry here. And um, music videos is definitely like one of my biggest passions when it comes to media. So I was very, very happy that I was able to help BJ here with teaching a bunch of high schools on how to like go about creating their own music video 
and teaching them the art of the the, the art of the medium itself. Because like it's one of those like forms of media that we don't really like dig too far on to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like we we know of it, we watch it all the time, but we don't really think about what makes them work. So I was glad that we were able to like get down to the nitty gritty of what makes a music video like a good music video. And Julius, you know, is really good at, at post-production. Like, I know that Julius freelances at doing post-production work in video, and music video is a, is a really post-production heavy art form where you can, and also a very creative one. You know, you're not making a commercial. You're making, you're not making even a narrative, well, sometimes you are, like a narrative sometimes. film. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But you also can make some really psychedelic, wacky, interesting, oh, yeah. who know, abstract, like, fun, crazy stuff with oh, music yeah. videos. Especially with uh, today's music videos, because the style has definitely, like, become more towards, like, including video effects to strengthen the story that you're trying to tell through the song. Like, a lot of uh, filmmakers like Cole Bennett and the guys at Lyrical Lemonade, like, who are here in Chicago, like, they've definitely been, like, pushing towards, like, music videos becoming very video effects driven, which said I want to, like, really, like, make the kids understand in the classes that, like, Music videos, they're way more open now as a medium than any other form of filmmaking, really. Like, all you just need is your own DSLR, a good artist, and some, and a good computer that can run After Effects, and you got yourself a solid video that could probably blow up or something. Right, and that's, you know, and as Julius was saying, that has a lot of roots here in Chicago with different styles from, um, you know, and Julius is, an, uh, once again, um, an incredible asset in, in this way, uh, knowing... Um, f being familiar with, well, why are you talking? Oh yeah, so like um, a lot of uh, <laughs> that's right. so like um, a lot of the music videos that like have been pushing towards like more video effects and just like camera footage of like the artists and like their friend groups was started with like uh, the rise of drill music in Chicago. Artists such as Chief Keef, Lil Durk, and Lil Reese, like. Their music videos were definitely a huge influence for artists like Cole Bennett, who definitely, like, he he saw the potential that he had, and, like, he went ahead and made it his own, which pretty much has now, like, blown up artists such as Juice World, and, uh, yeah, don't know why there's R.I.P., yeah. Juice yeah. World. Uh, don't know why other ones are coming to my head. Also, Ski the Slum God, but, like, several rappers now today are, like, pretty much banging on Cole Bennett's door to get a new music video that pretty much started with, like, the DIY style of the Chief Key videos, which were at first very bare bones production value wise because Chief Keef himself, I believe, was on house arrest during the making of the video for Kings for uh, Love Sosa, which um, was a very revolutionary video when it comes down to like what a modern DIY video could be. But yeah. And then, you know, and it also can lead, music videos can lead into a film career too. It's oh, very a, often much. like a yeah. relatively cost efficient way to enter into the film industry. Academy Award filmmaker, Academy Award winning filmmakers like uh, Spike Jones and David Fincher, they started off as music video directors. So it's definitely like, it's definitely a pathway that not enough media artists take advantage of when they're trying to like get into the film industry, to be honest, which I now also want to like stress to the students is that like, the, if you want to make movies, music videos are a good way to like jumpstart into it because it's all storytelling. It really is. That's true. And we, you know, we had um, a really good semester, a really good term with our high school students. Um, once you get into video editing, it's, you know, I mean, if if it's your thing, it can, it's very, um, a very empowering experience. Something that you can also go off and, you know, have a career. Julius and I have both focused our lives on art careers, and we, we give that example to the students. A lot of people... Um, are nervous about getting into art, and it is—it's different kind of life than um, some other kinds of careers. But it's very possible, and we want our youth to know that 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 they can do that. And of course, I mean, a lot of the skills that they learn transfer, um, regardless whether they have an art career or not. You know, um, video is based on photography, essentially. You know, and photography, media skills, all of these things you need in today's world to be able to market yourself as. Um, and whatever you do, so you have a leg up there. But um, at any rate, we had a music video class this summer, or excuse me, this fall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
uh, we, well, yeah, you know, Julius had a friend of his come in and um, we did some, what, you want to tell them about that? The green screen and all yeah, that? Sure. Yeah, sure. So, like, uh, the first project that we uh, did in the music video production course was uh, I brought in a local musician friend of mine, Greg Evans, who uh, makes his own, like, lo-fi indie rock that you can find on Bandcamp. And he had this song, uh, Tiny Little Demons, that I felt like was a good option for them to like try like make a music video off of using the examples that I showed them of artists like Jack Stauber who like uses a lot of green screen animation and video effects that he creates in post-production to show them like how much post-production can like very much influence a video itself mm -hmm. instead of like mm -hmm. having to be worried about locations production value you can really just bring all that together in post if you can like have the options available to you to do so and, like, uh, we brought Greg Evans in, we uh, listened to his song and everything, and we planned out a couple shots to shoot of him on the green screen. And after that was done, pretty much I allowed all the students to, like, go ahead and make their own version of the video using the green screen, where they could key it out and then put whatever backgrounds, put whatever graphics they want over it. And we got about uh, three solid cuts out of it. Yeah. You know, um, and you know, the students used footage, like what Julius was saying, like, you mo most of the time doing film or video can be is really expensive because you're usually going off site and using you know all the expenses involved in going off site um, are are prohibitive. But what Julius is saying, then you know we used a green screen to record the artist, and then the students had the option of filling in the green with whatever they wanted. And nowadays you can get a lot of really great. Um, copyright free footage off the internet and um, you can also you know create your own sort of background footage if you want that's more abstract and uh, and it worked it worked out pretty pretty great we also did uh -huh. lyric videos so you learn a bit the, the you learn a bit of, about motion graphics um, and animation keyframing stuff like that and and they did great uh-huh um, so we do have an exhibition coming up this week. Um, this on Friday, Friday, actually, yeah. Yeah, Friday <laughs> from five from five to seven, and it would be gr it's a great opportunity to come and see the space, to see student work. Um, Shot Cat is part of a larger group of centers for technology that's actually international. It's mostly, I think there's like 11 centers for art and technology in the United States, and then there's one in Israel, and now. Well, I guess, yeah, and, the, and they're putting, um, they're good thinking of building one in Puerto Rico. And these all have, we're all um, inspired by the vision of a man named Bill Strickland, who created these centers for art and technology, these, and they're beautiful spaces where um, students are, rise to, to the, the beauty and the technology and everything around them to be able to create a life in the arts or use design thinking and if they um, when they turn 18 if they want to go into our adult program and get a vacational education um, they can do that. Were you going to say something? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, the exhibition. So, the exhibition is coming up on Friday. And if you want to come see the space, um, it, would, it would be a good time to see uh, what, we, what we do there. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> why don't we take a little, uh, another look at our website, and you can kind of see a little bit more about ShyCat that way. Our website is shycat, C H I C A T, dot org. So let's go back to there. Woo! Um, so here we are at ShyCat's website. Now, if you want to find out more about. Woo! I mean, if you want to fi find out more about who we are, you can come see, you know, come to our website. Here's, this is a view of our building here from the parking lot. This used to be a paint factory and it's totally rehabbed. Like this portion right here that you see is a beautiful gallery where we show our student work. Um, sometimes we have guest artists there. Um, uh, 
Yeah, and so our in our mission, and this is really worthwhile to give this, I think, a, a read, that we educate and inspire youth through free arts and technology programs. We empower adults through free job training programs that help them find sustainable employment. Elevating the talents of the community through transformative art studios, industry-driven vocational training, and a beautiful space to unify um, the communities that we serve. Um, so that's a really, that's an, a unique vision, and it's been replicated through um, many different cats, as we were saying. There, the original one was in um, Pittsburgh, is still there. It was uh, developed, I think it started in the 60s, it's like 50 years old now. Yep. And um, they are incredible resources. In fact, just today, two of the um, people who work with the Pittsburgh uh, unit <laughs> came to talk to us about how we can improve our youth arts experience here. And we got just a ton of really good advice from them. Shycat is only a few years old, so if you haven't heard of us, that's why. Um, we are a new arts and technology organization, and we, and, and I'll reiterate that we're no cost, uh, no cost for any of our uh, any of our programs, our after-school programs, which we have for youth, our vocational training, um, which we have for adults, and in that, in with the adults, they get the vocational training certificates, um, all their books, everything is no cost, and there's job placement. And I know we have a super high job placement rate. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh, where was I? Just talking about Chai Cat in general. Um, I was talking about something. Do you remember what I was talking about? Placement rate. Placement rate about before education. the uh, come to uh, well. At any rate, um, oh, so, so we're we're a relatively new organization. Yeah, yeah. three years old. Uh, yeah, and um, we have a new executive director, Lisa Moultrie. She rocks. And oh, I know where I was going with this. So we have this national. Um, support, which is essential when you're starting a new, any kind of new uh, organization, you know, a new nonprofit, a new business, uh, that kind of support is really invaluable. And it's, like I said, it's been rep replicated many times. So we're not just, you know, whistling in the dark. Uh, this is uh, a tried and, and true uh, service organization. Um, <laughs> So we talked a little bit about, did we, let's talk a, t a little bit about the spring in a couple minutes. We only have a couple minutes left. So in the spring, um, we are offering graphic design to our high schoolers and we're offering podcasting to our middle schoolers. We have a very um, enthusiastic <laughs> group of middle schoolers <laughs> right now who who uh, love podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. Which I was uh, very surprised by. I didn't think that would be the... Form of art that I get them all excited. Yeah, you know, and in the yeah, digital lab. No, no disrespect to podcasting, just yeah. like, I don't, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, um, they're in the digital lab, like, we really like to give them some space to explore what we do, no matter what class they're taking. So, for instance, in the podcasting class, I like to give them some time every class period to explore the other things in the classroom. We have, uh -huh. you know, cameras and fit equipment, like, you know, we have that green screen, we have C-stands, we have li lights and gels and all kinds of all kinds of stuff for them to play with. So we want to make sure that they're really um, have the opportunity to explore what they uh -huh. want to learn, yep. you know. And that ISO booth was uh, definitely one of the main attractions for them. <laughs> we turned one of our storage closets in the studio, which is gorgeous and has a beautiful view of downtown. We're so lucky. Yeah. Um, and we turned one of our storage closets into an isolation booth. But um, So that's the um, Who's Pop class, the podcasting class, and then we have a graphic design class for the middle school, or excuse for the me, high schoolers. for the high schoolers. And graphic design is kind of the essential foundation if you're going to get into anything graphic, like if you're going to, um, you, you know, video, motion graphics, um, you learn all kinds of things about composition and color, um, 
composition color. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <I learned. laughs> anyway, you learn a lot. You learn all, all, all kinds of foundations yeah. of art practice. And you know, if you want, you can hang up a shingle afterwards and start charging people yep. to make art. <laughs> so, which is helpful. But we got nine seconds left here uh, on this wonderful show at Can TV. So. Thank you for watching and um, get in touch with us at shycat.org.